Indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker, can I first of all say how hugely grateful I am to the people of North Dorset for returning me to this place to allow me to continue to speak and work on their behalf. I think it's worthwhile just reminding ourselves that this was a national referendum, and I hear what colleagues from Northern Ireland and Scotland say, but we didn't say that all four constituent parts of the United Kingdom had to vote uniformly. It was a national referendum on a first-past-the-post basis. And it is a very thin veneer of defence uh, for an argument supporting separatism to hide behind when they, when they trot out these lines. For those who have questioned this side of the House's commitment to uh, protecting and enhancing the rights of workers, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker, I hope it won't uh, embarrass or upset the opposition too much when I point out that my party is now the party of the workers of this country. They have voted for us in huge, huge number. And I would have to ask, no thank you, and I would have to ask, I hope a rhetorical question, why would any party in government seek to undermine the rights who, of those people who have turned in such great number to support us, not least in order to get Brexit done? Now this is of course, Mr Deputy Speaker, a sad day. Other colleagues have commented upon the paralysis which we've endured over the last 18 months or so. Today should have been taking place to allow exit from the European Union in March. So I do hope that a spirit of broader pragmatism and cooperation can break out. And a number of people have reflected upon some of the key messages of the electoral event of last Thursday. My take is that it was a civil war, but without the blood. Voters in great number picked up a ballot paper and a stubby pencil and reasserted their rights, reaffirmed their role as the, our masters and bosses. And we cannot, as Democrats, ask the people of this country to give us a decision. And then when we find it either surprising or inconvenient, find every trick in the book to try to evade and dodge it. Because I noticed in my post bag, and I'm sure other colleagues found this as well, up until May of this year, I seem to be inundated from, by constituents who had ideas about how to break the deadlock, break the impasse, move things forward. But after May, and certainly after the elections to the European Parliament, people were starting to write to either say they were so fed up they were minded effectively just to opt out of the democratic lives in this country, or worse, were trying to explore avenues of civil disobedience in order to some way ventilate their growing frustration at the arrogance of too many people in this place who thought that they knew better than the people. And what greater exposition of that arrogance was there just last week from the campaign from the Liberal Democrats? Illiberal and undemocratic, worthy of neither titles that they give to their, give to their names. The smug intellectual arrogance that they deployed, that they knew somehow, where are they? Where are they, says my honourable friends uh, from Dorset South and elsewhere? Where are they? But that terrible righteous smugness, which seems to be a unique part of liberal democracy DNA, that they know more and better than everybody else. I won't give way. And of course I'll give way to my honourable friends. <laughs> On the point of smug, <laughs> can I invite him just to reflect on the result in Scotland and remind the House how many of his colleagues were here from Scotland before the election and how many were returned after it? Yeah. Well, let us be frank, Mr Deputy Speaker. The SNP had a very successful result, not as good as he and I will remember of 2015, and it will, as others have commented, <laughs> present challenges for those of us who believe fundamentally in the preservation of the Union, who will now need to find arguments which are more compelling than merely the broad, abstract, romantic, and not so much focused just on the pounds, shillings and pence, but making the positive case for the Union.
And I think that is an important point. Because as we, because as, because, no thank you. Because as we face in to both the opportunities and the challenges of our country leaving the European Union, I am absolutely convinced that we stand the best and strongest chance of making a success of this new chapter of our national story if we stand shoulder to shoulder and do it together. May I just say, Mr Deputy Speaker, a brief word in relation to uh, Northern Ireland. It's very clear that as the only part of the Kingdom which has a land border with a country which will remain part of the European Union, that we needed a border. The question was what and where. We tried the North-South and we found it to be impossible and not supported by many. The East-West proposal is clearly not perfect and of itself presents challenges. But I don't believe, Mr Deputy Speaker, that the people of this country define themselves by the narrow rules which govern their custom arrangements. It is far more deep and spiritual uh, than that. It is key that we maintain the, the integrity of the unity of our United Kingdom. The challenge, which I'm fully alert that the front bench is seized of, is to ensure that whatever regime of customs arrangements flow, they are of the lightest of touch and are, in essence, cost neutral. And we can do that through all sorts of VAT reclaim and other mechanisms. Let me conclude, Mr Deputy Speaker, by saying that the people have spoken. And we on this side of the House are their champions. We listened to what they said in 2016. We've heard it again. The challenge for this place, we on this side of the House, are fully armed to ensure that we restore the democratic legitimacy of this place, the national respect for it. The challenge will be for opposition parties now to put aside the arguments which they have, argued, which they have deployed in full sincerity and in good heart, but simply they have lost. It is time to move on. This bill gives us the opportunity to do so. It has my full support. Yeah.